I usually start my videos off in a very excited and chipper way, but I'm not gonna do that with this one because I don't think you're in the mood for that because when I was going through my methotrexate, methotrexate experience, I was not in the mood for it at all. And one thing that I was doing when I was going through my experience was I was continuously Googling what I should expect because I was terrified. And all I was able to find were like scholarly articles and things that didn't really help me feel better, which is when I decided that once I did feel better and once I went through my experience, I was gonna sit down and I was gonna record a video telling you guys exactly what my experience was like. It's kind of hard because everybody is different and everybody is going to have a different experience on methotrexate. Um, but I can tell you what my experience was like and I hope that brings you some kind of comfort. So if you are watching this video, you likely have already discovered that you have had an ectopic pregnancy. First of all, I wanna say I am so sorry for this experience. I know firsthand how terrifying, how heartbreaking, how emotional this entire experience uh, can and probably is for you right now. Um, not knowing what's going on with your body, not knowing what's going on with the ectopic, not knowing what's going on with how you're gonna react to the methotrexate shot. I think the thing that really just got to me the entire time I was going through my ectopic was just the idea that I just have to wait and see. I have no answers. And as somebody that thrives on having control over situations, it was a situation where I completely lost control and I was completely aware of that lack of control and that messed with my head. So I'm not gonna get into my ectopic experience because that's not what you're here for. If that's a story that you wanna hear, I am happy to make another video about it, but this is all gonna, this is gonna be about my methotrexate experience. Before we get into this, I just wanna say that although that there are a few factors that can cause an ectopic pregnancy, a lot of the times they can happen for no reason at all. And whether you fall into one of the factors or it just happens spontaneously like it did for me, I just wanna let you know that this is not your fault. One in 50 women in the world will experience an ectopic pregnancy. And a lot of people, it's, it's not talked about that much, which I don't understand why. I find comfort in books and movies and TV shows where I can relate to situations and I found that there was nothing out there that really talks about the experience of an ectopic pregnancy. Even with miscarriages, it's still kind of a hush-hush situation and I don't see why. If this is your very first stop in your Googling methotrexate journey, I've been there, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the drug. Keep in mind that this is coming from somebody that is not a medical professional at all. This is just from the research that I've done. So methotrexate is a drug that uh, is used for a lot of different reasons. It can be used in chemotherapy, it can be used to help rheumatoid arthritis, and it is the most common drug that is used to help ectopic pregnancies. And the way that it works is it stops cells from dividing so that, hang on, let me look at my notes so I don't get this wrong. It stops cells from growing, which in turn helps the egg pass. The egg is then absorbed by the body for the next four to six weeks. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it works. When I received the shot, uh, I was terrified. I was in the hospital by myself because of COVID. Nobody could come in with me. Um, I had no idea what was going on. The doctor came in and told me that I have two options, either surgery or the methotrexate shot. But since my HCG levels were at 1100 and I really wasn't showing a lot of uh, signs of distress, like when they were to touch my stomach, I didn't have any tenderness. Uh, so I, I wasn't showing too much signs of distress. So they figured the methotrexate shot should work fine for me. So he had explained to me that I'm going to get the shot. I have to come back in four days to see if my HCG levels would drop. And then I would have to come back three days after that. So a week after the shot and see if they've dropped even further. Ideally, they would want it to drop 15% more than what it was 
after my first appointment, the four day appointment. And then they would determine whether or not I needed surgery or not. I found that to be a little scary because essentially you have to wait a week to see if you need surgery or not. Uh, and the waiting game is really what, what messed with me. I remember going home and just not being able to sleep, being terrified, thinking that every little pain and ache was a rupture and wondering if I should go back to the hospital. But I calmed myself down and I decided to trust the process as hard as that was. And based on the conversations I've had with some women who were nurses or women who have had ruptured, uh, ruptured tubes due to an ectopic pregnancy, apparently the pain is uh, very severe and you know when you've ruptured. So that kind of gave me a little bit of kind of leverage with everything. It's funny because, well not funny, but a friend of mine, one of my best friends was pregnant at the time that I was going through my ectopic and we had this conversation about fertility in general and how whenever you have any kind of questions about it and you google it or ask anybody a question or ask the question to anybody, sorry my mind is everywhere, that all the results basically say it's normal until it's not normal which is so frustrating, but I understand because every body, like I said before, is different. So they can't write something off as normal when it could not be normal for somebody else. So that was kind of a good gauge. If I knew that, hey, this is not right, I know my body. And at that point I had really gotten to know my body because my doctor completely, completely disregarded me and my tubes could have ruptured um, if I did not advocate for myself and insist that something was wrong. And I'm glad that I did because we caught the ectopic fairly early on. Uh, another thing was I couldn't eat and I know a lot, I didn't know if that was my anxiety or not because when I get anxiety, I usually, my appetite is completely gone. But a lot of women that I know that have had ectopics said that they had trouble eating as well in the very beginning stages. So uh, if you're experiencing that right now, don't worry about it, your appetite will come back. So now onto the symptoms that I experienced on methotrexate. So basically uh, the doctors and the nurses at the hospital were actually absolutely amazing and they answered all the questions Questions that I had in terms of what uh, I should expect and stuff but I still had a lot of questions I still had a lot of um, ideas of what would it what it would be like and I thought it was going to be like a chemical DNC I thought that there would be a lot of bleeding I thought there would be a lot of cramping I prepared myself with like all the overnight pads and all that stuff just to make sure that I was ready and then I found out that no on methotrexate actually the body is absorbing the eggs so heavy bleeding should not be expected if you're bleeding enough to fill an overnight pad in an hour or less that's when I would say it's probably better to go back to the hospital but if you're spotting completely normal so um the next day the cramping was not bad at all. I started experiencing a bit of a headache, a bit of stomach upset, a bit of indigestion, just not feeling good. But in terms of like heavy cramping or anything, it wasn't that bad. Um, the third day I woke up and my cramping was so much worse. I would compare it to just a really heavy period cramp type thing. So um, I woke up that day and I had really bad cramps. I was talking to a friend of mine that's a nurse and I was asking her, you know, what's normal, what's not normal? She said, can you get up? Can you get out of bed? I got out of bed, I fed my dog, I made myself some coffee and she was like, the fact that you're walking around, that is a good sign. Do not worry at all. Um, she's like, if you feel like you cannot walk, if you feel like you are in so much pain that you are doubled over, please go back to the hospital. Uh, I also called a doctor that I had been dealing with, not my doctor that completely disregarded me, a new doctor that was absolutely amazing through all of this. Um, and he said that it was completely normal. I was feeling pinching pains on my sides, which scared me a lot, but he said actually that's the methotrexate working and that is the egg basically being removed from the tube. Um, so that pinching pain was normal. I experienced really bad migraines. 
and just cramping, a lot of cramping. So it wasn't anything, I, I was taking Tylenols, uh, 500 milligram Tylenol every four to six hours. They did offer me T3s if the pain got too bad, but the pain was not that bad at all. Like it was tolerable. Uh, some things that helped me were just staying hydrated, lots of tea, lots of water, soup just try to stay hydrated as much as possible um, a heat pack on my belly that felt really good and then again the tylenol i would kind of start feeling uh the tylenol wearing off like every four to six hours i would take one and then when i was nearing like the end of that four to six hours i would definitely feel the pain a little bit more so that was the third day and the worst day for me and it wasn't even that bad. I wouldn't want to do it again, but it wasn't that bad. So that was, I would say the worst of my experience. Um, after that, I had gone to bed that day and I had a very almost spiritual experience. I don't know if I, I'll bring it up in this, I'll, I'll just kind of brush over it, but I uh, went to bed early that day. I took a lorazepam. I take lorazepam for anxiety and my doctor said, it's probably best to take it in the evenings uh, during my methotrexate experience so that I can kind of gauge what's anxiety pain and what is actual pain because a lot of times, if you have anxiety, your mind will trick you into thinking that you are in more pain than you actually are. So uh, I took a lorazepam, I took a Tylenol, I took my heat pack to bed, I went to go lay down, and then I just had this like experience where I just tried to get myself in a meditative state and I just kind of talked to my body, I talked to the egg, I talked to... Um, you know, the, the uh, depending on what you believe, I believe that there was a little soul inside of me and I talked to that little soul and told it that it's okay to move on and it was a very, um, it was a very emotional experience but I think it was healing for me and I did feel better the next day, physically and kind of emotionally and I mean, I'm not saying that me talking to it helped, like it was the reason I felt better but it's, um, it, it was definitely due to the drugs that helped. So then day four, I went back to the clinic, uh, very, very nervous, the fertility clinic, and I got my HCG levels taken. They had gone down um, more than 600 points. I think you would say points, yeah. So I was down to 388, I would say, in my HCG levels, so that was good. They were saying, you know, you're responding well, but let's see what um, your numbers are when you hit a week. I went back after a week and my numbers went down to 130. So I was cleared that I did not need surgery, but I did have to go back to the clinic every uh, week until my HCG levels were at zero. Uh, that took in total about three weeks. So I had my methotrexate shot on February 1st, and then I was completely cleared that my beta had hit zero by uh, February 23rd. So just over three weeks of um, the whole experience. So one dose was enough for me, but some people have to get a second dose, uh, which is fine. And I think with the second dose, I haven't had one, but I have joined a group of women who have gone through ectopic pregnancies and everybody's kind of sharing their experiences. And uh, some people say that with the second dose, they did experience some nausea, um, just a little bit more discomfort, but just keep in mind that this is for your benefit. This is going to help you feel better and this is going to help everything pass safely. One mistake that I made when going through my methotrexate experience was I was so in such a hurry to get back to normal, I think because that was my coping strategy. So as soon as I started feeling physically a little better, I went right back into working out. Big mistake, I should have just let myself heal. So with the working out, um, I started experiencing the bleeding again and it was just spotting at first and I was thinking, okay, it's normal, it's normal, it's fine. Until one day I was at the grocery store and I completely hemorrhaged and that was, terrifying because it, it was just scary. That's not an experience that you want to go through. Went back to urgent care, they did a bunch of tests and they told me that basically if you have a cut on your arm, if you have a huge gash on your arm, you are going to take care of that because you can see you can see the cut, you can see the blood, you can see the infection and you are going to make sure that you're not really using that arm much. You're you're taking care of the wound. When the wound is internal, it's easier to ignore it which is what I did. 
And because I was ignoring it, I wasn't letting it heal. So I was very inflamed. I had to take an anti-inflammatory and I basically was put on bed rest for a week. I wasn't allowed to work out. I wasn't allowed to go for walks. I wasn't allowed, I basically, couldn't get up unless I absolutely had to, which was so frustrating because I knew that I had done this to myself. If I had just relaxed and not worked out and not jumped back into things, then I it, it wouldn't have happened. One thing is when you are on your methotrexate experience, although you are going to start feeling better progressively, wait until your beta hits zero before you go on with any activities that you did before, um, your your ectopic so working out um engaging in intercourse anything that really disrupts the uterus lining just avoid that another thing and this has i don't think this has much scientific research backing it up but a lot of the women in the group that i follow uh talked about this is going on a low folic acid diet so do not take your prenatals if you are on, on methotrexate because folic acid does interact with interact with methotrexate and try going on a low folic acid diet uh one thing is people say drink lots of green tea apparently green tea helps get rid of the folic acid in your body which in turn helps your levels go down quicker again i don't know if there's any research to back this up but a lot of people swear by it so it doesn't it hurt to just drink lots of green tea during your experience. I mean, do stay hydrated throughout the entire experience because that is important. Another question that a lot of people have is, will it happen again? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question because that's something that I'm currently dealing with. Uh, I am terrified of the idea of getting pregnant again because I'm terrified of this happening again. Uh, and. I have been working with a professional and kind of talking about my feelings about all this. And what I've gathered from that is that when somebody has gone through an ectopic pregnancy, it is, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it is a life-threatening experience. And uh, you are kind of, in a moment's notice, you realize that you are dealing with your own mortality, as morbid as that sounds, and it's terrifying. And going through that experience results in a lot of the times um, dealing with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is what I'm dealing with right now. Some of the things that have happened after, after my beta hit zero and after I was physically fine, that's when the emotional side of things started coming in. So depression, anxiety, I even went through episodes where I just kind of like disassociated from reality and I just was getting really angry and I was getting, it, it was, I wasn't dealing with it properly, I guess, but I think there it's a it's a sense of grief that not a lot of people get unless they've gone through it themselves. Um, you are grieving the child, you are grieving the fact or dealing with the fact that you went through an experience that could have changed everything. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot to take in. So just know that anything that you are feeling emotionally at this point, it's completely normal and it's completely fine. It's gonna take a while to mentally kind of get through this and take your time with that. Another thing that my therapist says is, I, I was telling her that, you know, I don't know if I wanna have a child anymore because I feel scared and she said why do you need to decide that right now you just had this experience it's not it hasn't even been two months since you had this experience you have not allowed yourself to heal why do you have to decide anything in the future at this moment just let yourself heal let yourself go through this let yourself feel what you need to feel and stop thinking about the future and stop obsessing about it so that's something that i'm really really trying to do and i'm really struggle with um a lot especially with that sense of control that I always need. But yeah, I mean, I just went on a rant there, but basically 
If you are feeling any kind of emotional symptoms after your methotrexate experience, it's completely normal. But yeah, basically if you are dealing with any kind of emotional reaction to your ectopic experience, your methotrexate experience, if you went through surgery, if you're dealing with any kind of emotional reaction to that, it is completely normal and it is completely fine. Don't let anybody tell you to get over it. Don't let anybody kind of take away from your experience. This is your experience. This is, it's okay to grieve. That's bottom line, it's okay to grieve and give yourself time to do that. Um, another question that I had when I was going through my methotrexate experience is when am I gonna get my period? So some women said that they got theirs two months after their shot. Some women said, like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of different varying uh, things. There's So another question that I had when I had my methotrexate shot was when am I gonna get my period? afterwards so um that's a tough one because some women will get it eight weeks after some women four weeks after but uh essentially when my beta hit zero is when i started getting period cramps and all that stuff and i think it was a day or two after I, they confirmed that my beta was zero was when i got my period uh your period a lot of people will kind of like a lot of people will talk about your first period after methotrexate and say that it, the experience is different from periods before. For me, I didn't have as much cramping. I didn't have as much physical symptoms, but there was a lot of bleeding. So in my experience, lots of bleeding. Um, and I think most women experience a significant amount of bleeding if I'm not mistaken. I am currently expecting my next period, so should come tomorrow. And I have been anxious all day long because a lot of period symptoms mimic early pregnancy symptoms. So the sore breasts, the cramps, the feeling a little foggy, it's all triggering my anxiety because it's triggering the experience that I had. And I think it's gonna take a long time before I don't associate those triggers with the ectopic anymore. And again, I think that's normal. And the only reason I'm talking about it is because I think a lot of women go through this and a lot of women that are going through it probably need to hear it because we don't talk about this enough. We need to talk about this more because these experiences are completely normal. Yes, one in 50 women get an ectopic and that doesn't seem like a big number, but that is a significant amount of people that have gone through ectopic pregnancies and there needs to be more support out there. And I, so, this is my first step in trying to start a conversation about ectopic pregnancies and the experiences that people have with them. So basically that is it for this video today. If you have any other questions about your ectopic pregnancy and you are comfortable to put it down below in the comments, please leave a comment down below. Let's start a conversation. We can answer each other's questions. I can make another video based on the questions and answers that are in the comment section. Let's just, start the support system for each other because I think it's really, really genuinely needed. And if you are going through your methotrexate experience right now, I wish you so much luck and I wish you so much goodness and I'm sending you as much good energy as possible. I know this is scary and I know you're probably feeling like, why me? Why is this happening? I know it sucks and I wish I had an answer for that. But again, none of this is your fault. This happens, it's normal. And don't be too down on yourself because the universe always has a plan. And after this darkness, there will be some light, I promise you. So stay well and I'm wishing you so much luck and so much love and so much happiness. And until next time, I will see you all later. Bye.